Well, Alexander, it's a bittersweet time for us. I feel like I've spent, I feel kind of like I did when I was climbing that mountain, actually, from, uh, I think, three episodes ago. Um, I spent a lot of time just, a little bit different, though, but a lot of time trudging, in this case, through, through a lot of greenery, uh, attempting to domesticate in order to get our footprint up and so we could play the card that required our footprint to be up, nor to raise our footprint up even more, but we kept getting nuts again and again. So we did something of a ritual, I think, um, which involved uh, the Hobbit Lord taking part, uh, unbeknownst to him, uh, but his cubes are green, which is important to the ritual, I think, because this was a very um, green-related ritual. We needed to capture the essence of green and bring it uh, into our own power. And so in order to do that, we needed a sacrifice. And the sacrifice had to be your alter, alter ego, Alexander. It had to be Pegasus. Um, we went through the green, we went uh, out away from the computer, which is our connection to the other humans, which is our connection to uh, this game in some ways. And we were away from the game. And when we came back, we were without the Pegasus, without um, her influence. She was lost to us three times now. Uh, two that I've told you about and one that will be revealed through the course of this video. But we needed, we needed that green cube to take her away in order that the green could give back, and it has done so. Our footprint has been raised up. We successfully domesticated uh, the coconut palm in this bit of paradise, which echoes also beautifully um, our recent vacation. Uh, and then we were able to play the short fallow mill pause, which was um, the final portion of the ritual. That wasn't all of the ritual, though. We had to get through the nuts first, and we did that by taking part in this game, uh, this nuts game, which cast us into this unfamiliar uh, fantasy world, fiction world, I guess. I think that's somewhat fantasy. Gargantua is a fantasy creature. And in order to um, start on start on the work of renewal after the loss of, of our, our most precious elder, um, Pegasus. And so our role was successful. After that, we followed it up with some um, attempts to domesticate the biofuel in the new world. Um, you know, it was pretty much flush and little red at this point, making all the calls. Cowboy was mute. We had some um, sort of spiritual direction from Pegasus uh, via you, Alexandra, uh, and the forum, and that's much appreciated. It's given us uh, a guidance, but we haven't yet been able to bring ourselves to war. We uh, had to finish the ritual first. And so here we are. We have a, a town here town there. Then we went into chaos and we decided that it was all too fitting for the ritual and for um, just to kind of complete everything that's happened that it was the last two vestiges of you, Pegasus, that had to go. And so you're gone. Um, and that's where we are. That's where we stand. Uh, we have two new elders, however. One is a um, woodsman and the other one is a forger. So let's figure out who they are going to be. And so I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently this time. I'm not just going to be drawing from whoever is not in a majority on the board. Um, I'm going to have a, a deck, a random deck, for the draw of the woodsman, and it's going to consist of four. Uh, the first three are the members of the Pablucklin Wren who have just returned from their mission. And there'll be more about that later. They're um, currently in shore, and they're in a meeting with their new commander. Um, so they have earned their way uh, back into, onto Earth, so to speak. I'm also going to be adding Cowboy to the mix. The reason why is um, Cowboy was the most touched, I think, by the loss of the final loss of Pegasus at the end, the third loss, taking the pieces off the board. And I think for him to um, to sort of take up the, the mantle that she left behind, there's something fitting in that, and I think it's maybe what she would have wanted and maybe what he he wants as well. Maybe it will give him some, some direction after his um, years of aimless wandering on the, the highways of the United States of America. So we are going to mix it up and we're going to find out who is our woodsman and then we'll have a different mix for our forger. Um, 
drop someone. I dropped, that was Kat who dropped. She's not in it anymore. <laughs> and I didn't plan this. Uh, it just felt like he should be it. Um, and I was kind of, I almost didn't do it randomly. I almost just picked him. Uh, but turns out my, my hands maybe knew more than my mind did. I don't know. Uh, but Cowboy is the woodsman. And because she dropped and because I can think of no, uh, no better forger uh, than Cat, as in Cat, um, it's going to be Cat, as in Cat. She, she kind of got picked prematurely by gravity and by the actions of Wolf Corbett, who is playing Cat, as in Cat, uh, as Lieutenant Capazoid in the Publuckland Wren. Um, for those of you who aren't following that portion of this, this broad tale, um, Lieutenant Capazoid is a creature made of rocks called a silicoid, Recently, she just had a fix to, grafted to her body all this this metal, like cybernetic stuff, so that um, she could move faster. Basically, <laughs> she, it was a, I had to do a lot of like uh, monkeying to get this to work out for for Wolf, but he wanted um, Lieutenant Capsule to be able to move more quickly, um, and so she's now this this creature of rock and metal, and uh, it seems like very fitting for a forger. It's a, by the way, it's a, it's like a steel forger, not a, not like a forgery person. Interesting on the subject of Wolf, it was actually uh, because he had played this card that our, our turn ended up being positive at all. It was the um, fire stick farming that Wolf had played into his discard pile that kind of unlocked um, all the other paths. The um, Hobbit Lord Mimim, along with some natural disasters, had clogged up our innovation track so much that we wouldn't have had a chance to um, domesticate otherwise. But since Wolf had that card, that fire stick farming card there, uh, that's that gave us what we needed to um, get over the edge. So there's more to this this whole uh, complex ritual that uh, upped our our foot footprint than that I understand and then um, than I've even uh, explained to you. And let's end things off, Alexandra, with the the brand new souped up Publucklin Wren itself. Um, the crew was able to make the requisitions required to make it a destroyer class. Um, and they actually have two extra modules, so if they got one more module, they could even bump it up again. Problem is, the higher up it goes, the, the harder it is to control. By higher up, I mean the larger it gets. The larger the ship, the harder it is to steer it. As Cowboy can tell you, um, a, a an 18-wheeler semi-truck tractor trailer is much more difficult to maneuver than a bicycle, for example. So some nice features here. We have two life supports. One of these is upgraded, so it can have a crew of nine. That's going to make a, allow the full complement of our um, Origins heroes to take part, along with um, two others. Um, one of which will be um, Snugbug, and the other one will be um, one of these fellows who were part of the Grand Goussier Kingdom. Um, depending on who the people choose, they're still trying to choose what their next mission is going to be, and then they'll have some more choices after that. It's kind of slow going consulting other people, but I like um, it. I like that it allows them to uh, have more deductive capability than you know. If I'm doing it on my own, it's really hard to deduce what I already know. Um, and also, there's some interesting personality choices that I would ne not necessarily make because my own mind is finite. Um, and so we have an extra cannon, which is nice. We have a sick bay, and we have a brand new doctor who is going to run the sick bay. We have a couple pilots, which is great. Um, we're going to have, you know, four engines, so we can have all sorts of power along with damage control, which will keep the ship um, repaired. Uh, Lieutenant Capazoid had a strong strong role in getting these two things. In fact, it was through her special connections that they were even gotten at all. Um, and those are very defensive and very protective things. They're healing things. One heals the ship and the other one heals its passengers. Quick note while we're talking about rituals in this um, spaceship, I don't know if it's meaningful to you, but the sick bay is green, the damage control is blue, Wolf Corbett is blue, and the Hobbit Lord Mimim is definitely green.